guys, it's Kami, and I am coming with you today to a project that I've been working on. Um, well, part of that project is a common event that I'm going to do um, to allow me to change battle backgrounds. So we're going to go over here. Um, you notice I put my cursor over here on where it says region, and that's going to be an important part of this thing, okay, as we go through this. So just bear with me and we'll get through this together and hopefully you'll learn a little bit of something here about as to um, how to use one of these features and see the numbers over there for the region and we can do different things with it. And one of the things, like I said, is we're going to change battle background. So um, hopefully you'll gain something from this. So what I'm going to do first is let's see okay here's our and you can see where I'm starting from right there my little person right there um, I'm actually gonna need to start outside of the map area first before we do anything else just because um, I'm gonna have it linked via the thing there you know hey here's our inside of our cave our next map and you can see how there's a bunch of ones and again we're in region mode so you can see the ones and all the rest of the blank areas are actually zero but the ones are there for when she steps on it um, my person what it should do is it, it, it should change our battle background when she steps on it and in the zeros it should be like so you can go ahead and see over here where it says specify battle background. It's dirt cave and dirt cave. So that's what I want for the cave. But when I have her step on the one, I, what I want it to do is to change that instead. The poison swamp. Um, this isn't exactly perfect. What I want because the, our thing is not poison, but oh well. We'll just go ahead and roll with it because I don't feel like making a new background just for that. So let's go ahead in here and you can see like I said region is F7 if you want to know how to get too quickly. So let's go back over here. Go to switch to event mode. And we're going to edit my little teleportation event. And you can see it's just doing the regular thing. Going in there. And what I'm going to have to do is you see it's the switch operation battle background on is to put make a switch. And this one says background. Pretty easy stuff, right? So that when I go into the cave, it's going to go ahead and switch our switch on to make it so that the battle background will change. So we can do that. That's our first step. Next step, of course, is to go back to our other map. So she can walk around here. In all this area. If I guess if I really wanted to, I could have it changed. There's, there's tall grass and stuff, but we're not going to bother with that. Um, we're going to have her, when she steps in the ones, it's going to switch. But let's go ahead and go back here. Um, let's go ahead and go to our database and our common event. And you see that I have lots of common events, so I'm just going to pick number 20. Why not? As to where to start from. You can put anything as a name. I put battle background because it describes it. Make sure it says parallel process. Our condition switch again and again is background. So it's going to turn on once I enter the cave via that entrance back there. And we're going to take a look at our variable operation. Map ID. And we're going to be using again variable operations, conditional branches, and uh, switches. So, and I just showed you how to do that real quick. Okay, I'm going to change it to, again, variable operation. It should be current map that we put it to. Substitute it so it's going to find our map ID. And thinking, well, why is this even important? We'll get that into that for a second, in a second. Next one's conditional branch variable. Map ID equals number 29. You're thinking, well, what does that even mean? Why do we, what, what do we, where's number 29 come from? Again, flow control conditional branch is how you find a conditional branch. But I'm just going to go ahead and edit it to show you. So when our current map is equal to 29, this is when it's going to trigger it. You're thinking, where well, again, where did I figure out the 29? Well, here's our map properties, and you notice, hey, at the top it says ID 29. 
that's how I got the number 29 for our map ID there. So only when I'm on this map, not on the outside, not over there in the castle foyer or anything else, just there. Okay. So we know that when I step into map 29, and it's when it's equal to 29, it should trigger it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to variable operation, x coordinate, and we want it to be, oops, and let's go to this one. You see I have four, four variables, x coordinate, y coordinate, current map, and region tag. So we're going to need four variables here. So let's use the x coordinate and substitute it to where it's finding the game data, players map x, or players coordinate x, so ca character player, it's map x, coordinate, it's going to find that, that's important. And it's also important that we find the y coordinate, so here's my variable, this is y chord, and we're going to go ahead and go to ok, substitute it again for players map y again by finding character, players map y is so, so and so. Okay, so acquire position information. I'm thinking, well, again, what is that? So to find it, we go to tab three and we go to acquire position information under map. I'm actually going to edit that so you can see. And we're going to receive the information. Again, we're going to go to our variable name region tag. Because again, that's those numbers that we we're talking about there, how to, what to step on. And the information it's going to acquire is region ID. You notice it has something like terrain tag event ID. We need region ID for this. And it's a specifiable, spe excuse me, specified by variable x coordinate and there's our variable that we got the x coordinate from. We did that earlier. y coordinate, we got it from the y coordinate. And you notice that we have over here, oops, sorry about that. We're going to get rid of that for a second and we want to make sure there we go now we can see it so see we have those <coughs> excuse me those uh, ones over there and that's what it means is when we step into the region tag equal to one it says change battle background to poison swamp and again you're gonna find that <coughs> excuse me by going to yeah over there there's our number ones over there We're going to find that by going to insert tab 3 and where it says map and under that change battle back. And again we want it to be a certain thing, poison swamp, we, we can change it anything we want, desert and snow. <laughs> that's not really going to work, but yeah that's just to give you an idea. So I have it changed right now to when I step in region 1, it's going to change to swamp poison swamp and dirt cave. Yep, just what I want. And that's pretty easy to see. But the next thing we had to do, we had to do the converse too. Um, I did this accidentally last time I was sitting here monkey through this thing that I forgot to put region tag equal to zero. That's all this other spaces that is not represented by a number. So my region tag when it's equal to zero we want it to be regular dirt cave and dirt cave. So yeah. And I'm just going to erase this bit here. And you can see what I did was I went to number one and I put it all around my pond area. Oops, got a little in there. Oh well. It works. There you go guys. You can see that. So when I'm walking over here, it's going to be just a regular background nothing there. It should be regular dirt cave. When I'm over here walking next to the pond area it should change to the new battle background. Let's go ahead and save it and let's go ahead and play test to see if this darn thing works. And I have the sound off. That's okay because trust me you really don't really care about the sound. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and enter and it's going to enter in and when it entered it pushed the switch and so if I should get enter Oops, sorry. If I encounter enemy, you notice that, hey, it did the correct background. But if I'm over here, let's say walking in this hallway, is there anything that's going to come up? Let's see, enemy, enemy, enemy. Up oh, there we go. Match room emerged. And hey, it's dirt cave and dirt cave. Just what I wanted. Awesome.
So yeah, so it, hey, it works. And so now she steps in the ones and it becomes that one. It becomes the dirt cave and the other one. So yeah. Um, one of the other things you can use with the region IDs, you notice over here where it says entire area, the enemy will specifically come into play in the entire area. But if you look at the other one where it says stout shroom and you go to where it says specify by region ID go to one so it will only come up in the ones where we put the ones at so this mushroom only likes to hang out in wet areas so I put it so it's only will come up there so that's another use of your region ID that you can do so it's not just that anyway guys um, this is a very short sweet little thing here so I hope you guys enjoyed it and hope it was informational uh, please leave any comments and stuff, and if you want to see anything else. But thanks again. Again, it's Kame. Bye-bye.